United States, the federal government gets in the way of the local community through its airport and raising its own revenue uh, there on site. Uh, the federal government limits what airports can raise in their own community from their own passengers, through their own passengers, through user fees and so forth, uh, to generate funds to finance uh, infrastructure. We don't have that mechanism that's in place all over the world. And we rely on, on government grants, and as you said, they're coming down. And we rely on debt, and that's a concern. U.S. airports have good credit ratings, but $82 billion worth of debt, which is a big number. And even if you have a good credit rating, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Portugal, three or four years ago, had a good credit rating. They were fine. And they didn't change anything about what they were doing. But a lot of outside influences happened and forced them into a bad situation. And so if you rely too heavily on debt for your future, you're literally mortgaging your future. Um, certainly, U.S. airport directors are envious of their Canadian counterparts in terms of the amount of economic freedom they have. They can use this modern mechanism of passenger user fees to generate financing for infrastructure without federal involvement, which again is what we're fighting for in the U.S. There's a lot of, there's a lot of envy, I guess you'd say, among U.S. airports for their Canadian brethren. And the Canadian airport uh, management also has a lot more flexibility than you have at a lot of U.S. airports, which might be part of city or state government and be subject to a whole bunch of um, additional um, regulations and procedures and all the rest. Canadian airports can act more as businesses. The problem here, of course, is the, uh, is the rent issue. And Canadian airports are still paying rent to the government. Um, the government likes that revenue coming in, but a Canadian Senate committee has looked at it and, and determined that it was not good for the future of Canada's aviation. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that can be turned around. The, the Senate committee's work itself was pretty monumental. It was uh, probably one of the most comprehensive uh, reviews of aviation that's taken place in over a decade. Uh, and as uh, the Senate uh, committee found, uh, there is no simple solution to the problem of uh, aviation competitiveness for Canada. Uh, that's why we think that the actual, the number one recommendation of the Senate committee report was that Canada work with uh, the airlines and the airports, that the government get together with the airlines and the airports to work on an aviation strategy for Canada. It would be great for airport rents to be eliminated tomorrow, but uh, there are other ways to, uh, to, to reform the system. Uh, it's not a, a, an all-or-nothing uh, uh, scenario. Uh, the FAA reauthorization bill passed earlier this year, good for another three years. Um, there wasn't a lot in it that we liked, frankly. Um, but we have three years to try to change the political dynamic. Washington's changed. And there was a time when you could, you got your position together, you got a few allies together, you talked to the right couple of people, and you can get something done. And that's not true any longer. You really have to generate that understanding and pressure and interest, what we call them in Washington, outside the beltway. People, so when congressmen go home, people at home are talking about how important the airport is. That's what we're trying to do. You, you would give airports the ability to generate resources of their own, give them that financial and economic freedom to generate resources and not be so beholden to Washington and all the different regulations and procedures and everything else that their competitors from around the world don't have to don't have to go through. So I think that's where you would start. But I do think, frankly, on the airline, uh, from the airline point of view, for example, there are some taxes that they that they pay. Um, over the last 15 years, there were some changes made in 1997 to the international departure and arrival fee that increased those. And the airlines have paid an extra $10 billion net over that time. And that money has not gone into improving the customer experience at the border when you arrive at U.S. airports. And so what I would say is if we're going to have a tax regime for aviation, it should have something to do with the purpose of aviation, which is to move people and products. And the funds generated by that should be invested in aviation. Certainly with the, uh, the rise of the Canadian dollar uh, and over the last 10 years we, we have seen that there is uh, an increase uh, and growing, continuing to grow uh, trend of Canadians who are traveling to U.S. airports to access lower fares. 
Uh, this isn't something that's unique to aviation, however, though. Uh, if you look at uh, the price of goods in the United States, uh, they're, they're cheaper than in Canada. There are structural reasons for, for why this takes place. So it's just as with uh, airport rent, it, there's no easy solution. Um, we want our airports to be able to offer, uh, you know, an affordable affordable offering to to air carriers and uh, and airline and uh, passengers, and that's what we're uh, we're focused on.